Hello class. Today we're going to take inequalities to the next level. We're going to solve two-step inequalities. So the standards we're working on right now are just seventh grade standards. So we're to represent solutions for one variable two-step equations and inequalities on number lines. And we have to model and solve one variable two-step equations and inequalities. So we're working with the inequalities. So let's review solving one-step inequalities real fast before we get to two steps. So if you remember from yesterday and the day before, to solve inequalities, for the most part, everything exact is exactly the same. We've got three basic steps. Step number one, get your letters on one side. Step number two, get your numbers on the other. And then solve. So in this particular problem right here, this first one, we got x plus 7 is less than or equal to 5. Well, you'll notice our letters are already on one side. They're on the left, so that means I need to move my numbers to the right. So I need to move this 7 over to be with the 5. And we do that by adding its opposite. So I've got a plus 7, so do we, we do a minus 7, and we do it on the other side as well. Our x comes down, our 7s go away, and it's less than, and 5 plus negative 7 gives us negative 2. Okay, now to do a quick graph of that, we put a single tick mark, we put negative 2, and because this is a less than or equal to, I put a closed circle and I shade to the left. So now, in order to check this, I'm going to pick a value that is less than negative 2 to, to plug into x. So the first value is negative 3. So if I plug in negative 3 plus 7, is less than or equal to 5. Well, negative 3 plus 7 is 4. And is that less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. <clears throat> so that works. So now the next one is a multiply problem. So here I don't want to know about 3m's. I want to know about 1m. So I divide both sides by 3. And I end up with m is greater than negative 7. So I put a single tick mark. I put negative 7 underneath it. I put an open circle this time because it's just greater than and I shade to the right, which is greater than negative 7. So then I pick a value just to check with. Okay, one value that is greater than negative 7, one that I like, is 0. So I can plug a 0 in. So I pick a value, and this one, 0, would work just fine. It's greater than negative 7, so 3 times 0 is greater than negative 21. So that means 0 is greater than negative 21, and sure enough, it is. So, in this last question, this is where we had the difference in inequalities for equations. So, I got to get rid of a divide by negative 4. So, I'm going to multiply by negative 4. And so, I multiply by negative 4 on the other side. Now, if you remember from yesterday, what we said is if I multiply through or divide through by a negative coefficient, my inequality is going to flip. So, in this particular case, my 4s cancel out. They make positive 1. So, I end up with x. 2 and negative 4 make negative 8. But instead of being greater than or equal to, my answer is going to actually be less than or equal to. The inequality is going to flip anytime that coefficient, the number with the variable, is negative. So now if I were to pick a value that is less than negative 8, but also divisible by 4, I'll get a nice number. Okay, so number less than 8, that's, or less than negative 8, that's uh, divisible by 4, is 12. Okay, so I'm going to do negative 12. So if I plug in negative 12 divided by negative 4, is that going to be greater than or equal to 2? Well, negative 12 divided by negative 4 gives me a 3. And is 3 greater than 2? Yes, it is. So it does work. And then we do our quick graph. Put a negative 8. It's going to be a closed circle on negative 8. And I need values that are less than negative 8 to check this. And that's all there is. Okay, so that's how we solve one-step inequalities. Okay, you just have to remember, letters on one side, numbers on the other, solve. So let's try a couple two-step inequalities. Now, two-step inequalities, we're going to do them the same exact way. Okay, letters on one side, numbers on the other, solve. Okay, the only thing we got to pay attention to is if our coefficient, the number with the variable, is negative, we know at the end our inequality is going to flip. So in this particular problem, the first thing I need to do is I need to get my letters together. Well, guess what? They're already together, and they're together on the left. So that means I need my numbers on the right. So I need to move that 5 by doing a minus 5 on both sides. We end up with 2x, the 5s go away, is greater than 2. Now, I don't want to know about 2x. I want to know about x. 
So I divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get x is greater than 1. So this should work for a value greater than 1. So the first value that's greater than 1 is 2. So we'll try that. 2 times 2 plus 5 is greater than 7. Well, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5 gives us 9. And is 9 greater than 7? Yes, it is. So it does work. So I come back and I graph this solution. Put a tick mark on the graph. Put a 1. Put an open circle on 1. And I need values greater than 1. Let's try another one. Okay, now this one's a little bit different because the x is on the other side. But are all my letters together? Yes, and they're on the right. So that means I need to move my numbers to the left. So I need to move this 5. So I do a minus 5, minus 5. I end up with negative 27 is less than or equal to 3x. So I divide by 3. And I end up with negative 9 is less than or equal to x. Now we can graph that. We know that we got to put a negative 9. We know that we got a closed circle on it. But now, in order to figure out which way to shade, you got to really think. This says negative 9 is going to be less than x, so that negative 9 is actually going to be the smallest number. Okay, so really, I'm going to shade to the right. Now, you could just take your x and your negative 9 and flip it. Okay, so I could take the x, take the negative 9, and you just have to pay attention to which way that's pointing. It's pointing at the negative 9. So I need to have the inequality still pointing at the negative 9. So now I need values of x that are greater than or equal to negative 9. So sure enough, it is shaded to the right. But so far on those two equations, or two inequalities, sorry, we solved them exactly the same. So now let's look at one that's a little different. Okay, so on this one right here, this one's going to be a little different. So again, I do the same first step. I change my subtraction to addition next to its opposite. And then I need to move that negative 12 to the other side. So I do that by adding a positive 12. I add that to both sides. So my 12s go away, and I'm left with negative 8x is less than 24. So now I divide through by negative 8. Now, this is where we got to remember. If I divide through or multiply through by a negative number, what's my inequality going to do? My inequality is going to flip. So my 8s go away. They turn into a 1. I end up with x. 24 divided by negative 8 is going to give me a negative 3. But instead of being a less than, because of that negative coefficient, it's going to turn to a greater than. So now if I were to choose a number greater than negative 3 to test this with, it should work. So I'm going to choose 0. That's a good number to choose. So negative 8 times 0 plus negative 12 is that less than 12. Well, we end up with negative 8 times 0, which is 0, plus negative 12 is negative 12. Is negative 12 less than positive 12? Yes, it is. So it works. So now we can graph our solution. Put a tick mark, put a negative 3. It's an open circle, and I shade to the right. Values that are greater than negative 3. So let's do one more, and then we'll call it a day. So what I'd like for you to do on this one right here is 1, is this going to flip? Let's, let's, let's maybe do a different one. Let's do this one right here. This one's a good one. So in this one right here, is my inequality going to flip? Well, we're not quite sure until we actually do some changes. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change my subtraction to addition next to its opposite. I know I had some stuff going on over here. Good grief. Same kind of thing happens to the board. My goodness. Okay, so I changed that. And now I notice my coefficient's negative. So I know my inequality is going to flip. So, are my x's together? Yes. So, I need to get my numbers over here on the other side. So, I start with that 8, and I do a minus 8, minus 8. Now, we need to remember, in, in plus and minus, it doesn't do any, have any impact whatsoever. Okay, so, my 8's go away. I'm left with a negative 2x is less than 10. Now, I divide by negative 2. So, if I divide by that negative, what's going to happen to my inequality? It's going to flip. So instead of being a less than, it turns to a greater than. And then 10 divided by negative 2 gives me negative 5. And that's all there is to solving two-step inequalities. Same exact steps that we do in equations. You just got to remember that if I multiply or divide through by a negative coefficient, your inequality is going to flip. So until next time, I'll talk to you later.